Hi there. Welcome back to my final video in my gear series of my Tahoe Rim Trail through hike. This video is going to be focusing on my kitchen and water filtration system, as well as the hygiene and toiletries and some miscellaneous items that I brought on trail. If you don't know, my name is Jennifer, or the Whimsical Woman, and I am glad you're here. I hope these videos have been helpful for you, whether you plan on hiking the Tahoe Rim Trail or any trail. But like I've said in every video, my gear is what works for me and it may not work for you, but hopefully the items here in this video can help give you a place to start if you are just super confused and overwhelmed. Let's get started on how I filter water. So you can't go wrong with a Sawyer squeeze. One end can attach to a smart water bottle, for example. I normally have a dirty bottle where that bottle is always used to collect the unfiltered water. Then I simply squeeze the water into a clean bottle that is safe for drinking. I also carried chemical tablets in case I needed a backup filter. Sometimes the water you come across is extra dirty. Maybe there's um, like a dead lizard or a dead animal or it just uh, tastes or smells really bad and you just want an extra means of filtering the water to make sure it's completely safe. So I don't carry a stove on trail. So instead of being able to boil my water, I need another means just in case. And that's where the chemical tablets come in. The chemical tablets that I brought on trail are actually aqua tabs. These are my second means of water purification if needed. I didn't need to use these on the TRT, but I have used these before on the Pacific Crest Trail and in other instances, and they don't taste super great, so I like to add something like Mio or Noon tablets to my water so it kind of masks the, the gross chemically taste, but these have definitely, I think, prevented me from potentially getting pretty sick. Like I said, I do not bring a stove, so I just eat cold food, um, not even really cold soaked food, just a lot of tortillas and tuna packets and uh, granola bars. I did a full video on what I ate on the Tahoe Rim Trail. Uh, you can find it up here, or it will also be linked in the description below. So all I have for my kitchen setup is a spoon. This one is from Tokes. I have also used Snow Peak brand, love them both. and. Along with my utensil, I had a Z-Packs food storage bag uh, where I just kept all of my food in. And then I also brought some Ziploc bags that I used uh, to pack out my trash. My kitchen setup is pretty simple and I really like it that way, but there will be extra things you will have to add if you do plan on bringing a stove. Obviously you will need the stove and you will need fuel and uh, you might need other kinds of pots and pans to cook with. Um, but for me and my very basic kitchen setup, this is what works. This can change depending on your needs and what you want and what you feel safe with. I definitely recommend some sort of first aid kit. I made like a homemade one and I like to carry it in little containers like this. In my homemade first aid kit, I usually have things like band-aids and more band-aids just in case. You might need like Benadryl or what do we got here? Uh, some antihistamines, got a few of those. Let's see, triple antibiotic cream. Never had to use that, but I have it in there. Some sting relief packets, see that, sting relief. I have Q-tips, tweezers, nail clippers, um, an antiseptic towelette. Just some uh, basic things that I might uh, need to use and be very thankful that I have. I do recommend for sure bringing some Benadryl or something if you have an allergic reaction to like a bee sting or food. Um, you never know, things get wild out there. So just make sure you're pre prepared for that. Um, you know, band-aids, um, any way to clean minor wounds and tweezers or nail clippers. You gotta really make sure that your toenails stay clipped while you're hiking because that will um, really hurt because I've had my toenails like cut other toes. <laughs> so um, yeah, you wanna make sure that you're keeping your toenails trimmed and then they're not hitting the ends of your shoes. So just, you know, like basic little hygiene and toiletry things, but yeah, getting like a little plastic container like this and keeping it all in one place has been super helpful. I rarely have to open this up 
thankfully, but it's just nice to know that I have things there just in case. I also make sure to bring, you know, Advil or ibuprofen is really great. And I have one of the small like travel size containers that I keep um, a variety of medicine in. I think I do have some ibuprofen and Benadryl in this small container. On longer through hikes, I actually do bring a large um, bit of supplements. So maybe a daily vitamin and for sure magnesium because I get pretty bad leg cramps and magnesium really helps with that. So if I was doing a longer trail, I would probably have another large container that had a bunch of vitamins for me to take. So you just need to, um, you know, once again, figure out what you think your body needs and what would be helpful for you and just um, accommodate that. And you can come up with anything. It, it's not like you need to go into a store and buy their first aid kit and bring that big bulky bag. You can take the items out of it and pack it in a way that makes sense in your pack. I always make sure, and I hope you make sure too, that you bring a toothbrush. I cut off the end of my, my bamboo toothbrush here. Um, it looks pretty dirty and gross. Don't worry, I haven't used this since. This will be getting tossed after this video. But cutting it off just helps because my toiletry bag is a little bit smaller. Um, and then I just get a travel size bit of toothpaste. Oh, my foot's asleep. Then I always make sure to have some sort of wet wipes, you know, to clean all the sensitive areas like the genitals and the armpits. And then occasionally maybe my face and my neck and my feet are getting super dirty because I've been caking on like sunscreen and then the dirt is sticking to it. And you know, I just need to clean. So just, you know, there's so many different kinds of wet wipes or bathing wipes that you can bring. Just make sure you have some Ziploc bags um, to carry out all the trash. I have a lot of hair, so I definitely need to bring a hairbrush or else I will get massive knots and massive dreads and it is horrible to brush those out. I lose a lot of hair in the process. So to avoid that, I bring a brush and I also cut the end of the handle off just to make it a little lighter and less bulky so it can fit in my toiletry bag. But you also can't forget chapstick. I like little tubes this little aquaphor tube or just, you know, little Burt's Bees chopstick or something. I like to have about two of these every time I go hiking, just in case I lose one. Sunscreen is super important to me. I am a very fair person, obviously. So um, I've carried big bottles of sunscreen, um, like from Think Sport. That stuff is great. I've also had little packets like these, so I can use these once a day and then put it in like my little trash bag and throw it out. So I'm kind of reducing my waste as I go. And then I have this big uh, dark freckle on my face that is very prone to skin cancer. So I always wanna make sure that this is extra covered. And so to have a little bit of fun, you know my trampoline is Starburst, I like to have these colored uh, neon sunscreen sticks that I just wake up and I don't use a mirror. So that's why it looks a little crazy and I just like, put it over my face where this big freckle is. And you can see I'm always wearing different colors in videos. I've got an old one here. This is from the company Bear Republic and its active ingredient is zinc oxide, which is great for protecting your skin from the sun. So we got a little dirt. This one's green. Here we go. Cute little stick. And you can just wear these for fun on your nose, uh, sensitive places on your body, but I do like to have some colorful things out on trail, just you know, to have fun, why not? That's my personality, that's how I got my trail name Starburst. I have another z Pax stuff sack to put all of my toiletries in, but to keep things even more organized in that stuff sack, since there's so many little items, I do like to bring um, and repurpose little plastic baggies that I may have lying around the house or if I order something from online and it comes in a small little baggie, I will save them and then when I go out um, hiking or backpacking, I will, you know, further break down my toiletries into specific um, sections. So maybe all of my um, toothpaste stuff goes in here with my toothbrush and maybe I have a sunscreen bag all together in one large hygiene and toiletries bag. Um, like I said, this is from z -Packs. They're super lightweight, but very durable. And there's different colors that you can choose from. And I always make sure to buy 
all different color stuff sacks in different sizing so that I know like, oh, the blue stuff sack is for food, the gray one is for electronics, and so on and so forth. One of my new favorite items to bring hiking is a cork ball to roll my feet out. This is from Rology and it is a fantastic thing to have in your pack if you have sore and achy feet at the end of a long hiking day. We went over my trekking poles in the pack and sleep system video, but I do want to point out that I do wrap duct tape around my trekking pole, just one usually. Um, this is just an easier way to carry some duct tape in case something rips and you need to patch it up and you don't need to carry a massive roll of duct tape. I have used up the duct tape on my trekking pole several times uh, for other people, but um, it helps somebody tape their trekking poles back together because they snapped in half and it helped another person um, tape up parts of their tent together that was breaking. So I definitely advise bringing duct tape, but find creative ways to store the duct tape. I've seen some people bring um, a lighter like for their stove and wrap the duct tape around the lighter. You know, really anything works, but I choose to put it on my trekking pole. I always bring a knife. Yes, for some self-defense if needed. I have all my weapons but mainly to cut the cheese. Not in like the farting sense, but literally like the pounds of cheese that I bring on trail to eat. So this Gerber knife does a great job. It's cut a lot of cheese, cut a lot of avocados. I swung this pretty close to my face, so I better be careful. There's many reasons why you may need a knife on trail, so um, I definitely recommend bringing one. But if you do plan on using this in self-defense, make sure you know how to use a knife in self-defense. But hopefully you never have to use it for that reason. But yes, this thing has hiked thousands and thousands of miles with me and I love it. I am nearsighted, which means I need to wear glasses when I drive or if I need to see things really far away, it's a bit blurry. And I want to see all those mountain landscapes when I am hiking, so I bring my prescription glasses I also recently just got prescription sunglasses, so that will be great to use next time I go hiking. But I found a really lightweight glasses carrier to bring with me to store my glasses when I don't need them and to make sure that they're safe in my pack. So if you need to bring glasses, try finding something a little lightweight like I did. And I have seen people bring their contact lenses and have all these cool containers for them. I don't have any advice for that, but just to let you know, if you do wear contacts and you do want to bring them hiking and backpacking, it can be done. The last piece of gear that I haven't really mentioned is a little wallet. I love this thing. This is um, actually from Waymark Gear Company. I don't think that they're making these anymore, or at least last time I checked they weren't. Um, I believe other companies make them, but just getting um, a lightweight little pouch. Um, you can put your you know, IDs in, uh, fold up your permits, and you can just put it in a pocket of your pack. So let's say you go into town or something, you have money easily accessible or an ID or your permit if you do get stopped by like a ranger or something. So this was just something little that I didn't really think about, but has been extremely effective for keeping all the necessary papers and IDs and documents that I need on any trail organized and in one place. The final items I want to talk about are actually three pre-hike items that I found very helpful and you may as well. I am not a huge gearhead and I don't really care as much as other people about my base weight and getting it as light as possible, but I do know that carrying less weight helps me hike better and my body appreciates it a lot more. So I have started weighing some of my gear just to get an idea of other areas that I may want to trim so that I'm not carrying a massive 20 pound base weight pack. So I actually bought a digital food scale and this has been great in weighing a bunch of those smaller items that's kind of hard to um, get an exact weight on or if you're buying something from online and you don't really know how much it weighs, this um, will help you weigh everything and then you can total it and kind of get an idea of where your base weight is at. And then another thing that is great is getting um, a scale like this, like a luggage scale, 
and you can just clip your pack onto here and then uh, pull it up and it will cause resistance obviously and then you can see how much your pack weighs and just if you're trying to meet a goal of um, a certain base weight or something the food scale and this weight are great ways to you know make sure you're staying on track if you don't care how much your pack weighs then you don't need those things at all the final item i am going to talk about is this it is a little pamphlet of the tava rim trail you can see that it's from national geographic and this thing is super great and very informative and it has resupply locations and section descriptions trail mileages detailed elevation profiles and so much more so we go through yeah there's like highlights and various pages of like i said the sections and the maps here you go even if you don't bring this uh, with you hiking, I didn't. It was just really nice to look at and kind of learn before I went hiking. It's nice to learn like the topography of where you will be going. But also, it's like a little souvenir of your accomplishment of through hiking the Tahoe Rim Trail. If you have watched all four videos on my Tahoe Rim Trail through hike gear series, then thank you so very much for supporting me. I hope you've learned something and enjoyed um, everything that I've been showing you. Please uh, think about subscribing. I will be having more Tahoe Room Trail videos coming out along with a lot of other exciting projects that I'm working on. I am very thankful to be back here and uh, posting on this platform again. I really, really enjoy it. Anyway, feel free to comment below. I try to respond to as many comments as possible. You can always find me on Instagram at The Whimsical Woman. That is the easiest way to reach me and I think I do a fairly good job at responding to everybody. But you know how this always goes. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Happy trails and thank you again for joining me. I will see you later. Bye.